All right, camera's rolling. And action. Hey, let's check out the kitchen. Spooky things happen in this kitchen, I'm sure. All right, so don't look at that. No matter what. Now we got spooky cabinets, spooky food, cupcakes that eat you, goblins that will just come out of the freezer. But Shane, were you looking at that? No. Don't look at that. Where's Shane? Does anyone know where Shane is? Oh wait, my glasses are on. Oh yeah. Come on guys, buddy system. I told you this. Buddy. Hold on. So last year um, uh, was awful. We entered in the holiday festival, and that was because we missed the registration for the original, the, for the regular 48-hour project. At first, it sounded awesome. Like at first, everything was going well. Like we had a good idea, and we were really excited. And uh, when we saw the finished product, we were like, "Oh, we wasted an entire weekend of our lives." Like I have not watched it since because it's so embarrassing we screwed up in basically every regard like you know overall last year was terrible we we made a terrible short and we should feel bad i spent a lot of time afterwards trying to think of why that happened we also just made so many mistakes ahead of time thinking over like all right next time what are we doing differently because last time we went double what it was supposed to be and we had to cut half of it out which really hurt us. This time around, we went in with much more clear goals. This time we went in and we're like, okay, we're going to write a basic script. We also practiced for it by doing those My Road Reel shorts, which were actually, I, I actually ended up, I think they, they proved to be really good practice, just doing these three minute short films, cramming an idea into three minutes. It prepared us because we were like, okay, so everything we did last year, we're gonna not do that. So like, we, we just did the opposite of everything we did last time. Just itching my finger with my right hand and steering very minimally with yeah, my left hand. Yeah, this is very concerning, actually. Like, well, it's just my finger's real itchy right now, dude. <laughs> now you're not even looking at the road. You were looking at your finger. I was just for a second, dude. <laughs> also, I'm wearing sunglasses. You can't see. You can't see. I can't see. I'm looking you can't at see. you from profile. Can't prove it, dude. So on the drive over, we were like spitballing ideas just to like, we wanted to get ourselves in the headspace of like coming up with an idea like really fast. We did some exercises which were very intentional. We play video games under the guise of characters. And these characters are characters that we make up through this process of just making a joke and then building upon that character. Like that's, it's the insecurity. I hate stupid people, frankly, you know <laughs> this. This whole, it's, it's kind of our favorite way to make characters because it's usually a really collaborative process. Gosh, frankly, no. Characters are just built through a democratic process of just adding on to it. Dolph does not understand. Dolph wants to learn about compounds. Whatever we think is funny stays. My mother got killed by a bear. My father got killed by snow. Having that just kind of be part of the creative process from the get-go was really, really instrumental into making Kip Wallace, Kip Wallace. Honestly, was kind of open to any theme. 
Uh, I didn't really care what it was. Uh, I definitely didn't want a uh, road, like road movie again. Though. We knew we didn't want road movie again. Road movie. I knew I did not want horror from the beginning. Th this is my naivete on day one. Like I was thinking, oh, time travel stupid. Like no one will ever do it great. And of course my favorite short film that we've seen the entire festival was The Time Bender. Comedy would've been good, dark comedy would've been good, but those would've been too safe. I don't know what I wanted. We were hot off the presses just making a full length feature. We just made like several other shorts just beforehand, like, and they all went smoothly. And I was like, this, like, what, what could this, like, what could this project even be? Like, this is gonna be nothing. We're gonna, we're gonna nail it. It's gonna be great. We just gotta get that idea. I just knew I didn't want horror or road movie. And then the first thing we got was horror. <laughs> really pissed me off because I was like, fuck! We can't escape the holidays! We're aware enough to know that we're gonna do what we're gonna do and we're gonna make something we're proud of out of whatever it is. Yeah, I was like, yeah, we got horror and I was like, sweet, that's like our bread and butter, even though you know, we haven't done it successfully at all. While we were walking back uh, to the car, you know, we're, we're throwing some ideas out there. Um, none of them are sticking. And then I was like, guys, we have, to, we have to take a step back. We have a character. Last year, we didn't do that. We started with an idea first and then made the characters afterwards. But we started with who is Kip Wallace first and then build an idea around that. I don't know. Like, I think this is like the first time this has ever like clicked for us. For whatever reason, it was like he unlocked the matrix. And honestly, that's how all of our best projects are made. Like. The feature we made, we the character came first and then the movie came after. Like normally I'm the one coming up with like stupid ideas and then Kevin or Sam Slater taming me down. But I find that Brian turns me into that person. Like Brian is usually the one coming up with something stupid and then I'm like, all right, but how do we actually do that? Well, Brian first had the idea of doing it just about this dilapidated house and how he was trying to sell it and it was awful and just like the, the, uh, the, the contrasting comedy. On the phone, He's telling him like, oh yeah, the kitchen looks beautiful, like it's gorgeous and like on film, like it's covered in filth, like the fridge is full of rotten food. And Alec was like, I like where your head's at, but I feel like that idea has already happened before. Uh, so I kind of ushered in a little bit and I'm like, okay, well what if it's that same thing, but it's like a haunted house? But eventually we came back to it because we were like, well, what if Kip Wallace keeps breaking out of the narrative? Like the haunted house, like he's used to the scary things happening, but new things keep happening and it keeps interrupting his commercial. So it goes from a commercial to sort of a mockumentary. Brian started doing the voice, and once the voice came, like once, once, hey, look at me. Oh yeah, come on down to my spooky house, you know? And just like, we kept making that. And that was just any person who was saying something, they were saying in that voice. And so whenever I want to like convey that like crappy, scummy voice, it just fits so well for Kip Walls. Like it goes from Chicago to Boston to Pennsylvania. Like it just, it just jumps between like regions. So it's like, are we doing ourselves a favor by doing that voice or should I just do it in my regular voice? And Alec was like, well, since we're a comedy, you're not gonna win best actor anyway, so just do the voice. I'm getting that sesame chicken curry, dude. I'm getting that sesame chicken curry. It's happening. Every 48 hour film project, you know, all two of them, uh, we, we converge at Curry House. Last year, we went to Curry House and we made a, a terrible short. This year we decide we're gonna do it again. So last year we went to Curry House and we were, because we were so confident. Uh, and this year we went to Curry House because we were so confident. And now that the shorts um, been pretty well received. It's a, it's a good luck charm. Now, now we can't not do it now, like, like for like forever. Well, so when we were at Curry House, we just called up and texted basically everyone we knew. We weren't super picky. We were like, Ezra would be good. Ezra was free, so he was there. So he can just do whatever, you know. It's like, you need him in makeup, he'll, he'll wear it and he won't complain. And then Rachel, same same sort of thing. We, she did that one thing one time, right? She made her face look all ghoulish, right? Mm -hmm. Let's just get her to do that. Okay. 
Kevin, what are we uh, what are we doing here in Dollar Tree? Getting a ball. Well, what's the ball for? Uh, well, a ball is the object that we have to we have to use for the shorts. So. Did you say you have like old soccer balls though? Yeah, Wouldn't that I be spookier? Yeah. <laughs> like stuff that's been left like, in my backyard for 10 years. I don't think we need to get a ball. Okay. Like balls easy. Okay, so I don't know why we fucking came here. Franny, you tired? I'm super tired. Why do I look tired? Oh, and a big difference this time was that we actually uh, wrote out a uh, basic script. I ended up being uh, the one at the keys. And uh, we just wrote down just basic events like this happens and this happens. And there's a line similar to this. And we would kind of agree on a line that we, we weren't necessarily 100% sold on, but we all kind of agreed that that was funny. Let's use that as a jumping off point. We're actually at uh, at this house here, and we shot uh, our last 48-hour project here, um, where um, well, this is where Thug Boyfriend lived in, uh, in our last short. So we're back here now at Spooky House. Maybe it's the same house in Canon. I don't know. The character did die. So who knows? Filming. Uh, this filming day was uh, much better than last time. Unlike last year, we were not in a rush. Um, we were able to kind of, you know, take our time. We we got lunch. We enjoyed shooting. Like I was never, I wasn't stressed a single time throughout the day. Like shooting is always the most fun because it's the only thing I have to do. Uh, we had access to the location the entire time, which was really helpful. Last year, halfway through the day, like we were cranky, we were annoyed, we just wanted it to be over. But this time, like. I just had a good time. It was a lot of fun. Doing the visual effects was a lot of fun. Just a lot of people were murdered here, so it's super haunted. Great stuff. Great. Oh, look at that. The spooks are already cut, starting. Cut. And uh, for the most part, the lines were pretty pretty accurate to what we had written. Because when you write something, and then when you're executing it, like you, you just get different ideas when you're on set. Like the, the short transformed as we were shooting it. A few things here and there were changed. There are some lines we're actually kind of sad we lost. We didn't realize we lost till later. Like at some point, uh, Kip Wallace was supposed to say after Shane gets in the voice. Of, I mean, what do we learn? I brought limited shit for because you asked. Well, Brian was in charge of telling you. Brian's more Yeah. Blue. We were like, oh, we we should get some really good like makeup looking like all on the dead people and all like the people that get killed and stuff like that. Like we're like, is she available? Is Mackenzie available? So we texted her, and she sent us a picture of something she did in her hand with like pencil or something. And it was better than we could have ever expected of anything. And it was just, that, with pencil, imagine what she could do with like paint or something. So Vince. Yes. You did the behind the scenes today. I did. And you also were just generally very helpful on set. Thank you. You brought you brought a lot of gear that was ended up being essential. Yeah. So we had a new member of the team this time around. Uh, someone that we've never worked with before. And man. Is it, is it too early to say that I'm in love? There was like almost no bumps in the road, uh, especially because Vince helped out a lot. Vincent is Jesus Christ. He saved us. He, he's actually wanted to work with us before and all of our projects, the, the, the scheduling never really lined up. He works a lot. For the weekend of the 48 hour project, he took the entire weekend off. He was so prepared for everything. He, he even had things that we absolutely needed. He just happened to have. I was like, you know, I, you know, I, I, I got a gr green screen suit. He was so awesome. He was such a major help. Was like, he was the MVP 
of the Kip Walsh guarantee. Vincent was the newest member to the team, so just talk a little bit about He was lazy? Vincent? Are you kidding me? He didn't do shit. Uh, no, Vince was great. He was great at being lazy. And he interviewed us. He asked us some great questions. Like, here, we cut to some right now. What made you want to become a filmmaker, Kev? <laughs> um... So how are you enjoying filming today with the boys and Rachel? Filming's always fun with the boys, not always with Rachel, but like it was fun this time. Son of a bitch. All right, Kev, so what's the story with this machete? Uh, <laughs> it's quite a story, actually. So the machete uh, was forged in hell uh, by Satan. How are you doing? I'm doing great. What are you doing, Rachel? <laughs> is the camera on right now? It is. Why? I don't know, I'm doing Vince's job for him. There was also a big difference this time. The guys as a whole were uh, much less uh, condescending when it came to um, me doing the audio. Like, it, it was better. It was, it was better this time. <laughs> Kevin's finally just accepted that he's the audio boy. Like he, he, like he was standing around before, like we even started shooting, and he was holding like nothing, like this, and he was like. And then we had to put a zoom in his hand, and then put earbuds in it, and he was like, oh. and he could hear again. It was like it was like Christmas. Like it was really like it was really cute to see. I mean, I did it this time, but like they didn't like ask me to. You cannot escape your fate. It was like, I'm, I'm okay with this now, you know, like I've come to terms with it. You know, it's like Stockholm syndrome or something. Uh, so in the evening, um, we were all getting hungry and it was time for dinner and we already had um, a really great breakfast. We had donuts and a really great lunch. We had um, burgers and fries. So we wanted to top it off with um, with some pizza. Me and Brian uh, went to go get said food and uh, and we were like, when we were excited, when we come back, we're like, when we come back, we're just going to film that last shot and it's going to be, it's going to be awesome and we're going to be done. Like it, like, we're, like the last shot of the day, like it's, it's going to be great. Uh, and then we get a casual text saying we're already going and we're filming it. So don't bother. Yeah. Are we fabricating drama now? Because there's nothing wrong with our shoot. Yes. No, so Kevin and Brian, and Brian are just like huge pussies about it. We were all sitting around. We were like, my makeup was done. I was ready to go. We were all ready to go. We don't, we don't, we, it's one shot. And in my head, I was like, okay, so they're going to come back with the pizza. That's going to take another 15 minutes or so. Then everybody's going to stop and wait and eat. And then after that, we're gonna go and just the momentum would be down. And I was just like, let's just go get it right now. It's gonna take five seconds. Let's just go do it. And then we're done. Like it was the last thing, you know? We had we had one thing that we needed to shoot at night and that was Sam Slade in the void. And so we decided to go out to a little um, nature walk that's kind of close to my house. The camera we've been using all day, uh, but Alec took the battery out. It was dead, so he didn't bring another battery. Vince again saved us, and he was like, well, you can just use my camera. It's, it's one shot, just use my camera. We're like, well, thank you, Vince. I went to bed at a regular time. Uh, Sam Slade was editing throughout the night. I was gonna finish editing the next day and then do special effects, so I was like, great, I get a full night's sleep. Editing last time screwed us up so much that I was like, okay, listen, I'm just gonna edit I'm gonna assemble it, whatever the project is, I'm just gonna assemble it that night so that the next day Alec can color correct it and just do any effects that we need. Like before we even knew what the short was, I was thinking that. Then I started doing special effects um, and then around 11, Sam Slade came over. I was pretty much done with the special effects. It was just some finessing. And uh, it was really easy to edit because all the takes are really long. You know, it wasn't a lot of like, intercutting. There are a few special effects things that I that um, that I did end up kind of having to rush towards the end, which I'm a little bummed out about there. I And I did learn some stuff about uh, camera tracking. Last year, I was there the entire day. Like we got Alec food and we were like distracting him and we were like doing ADR and stuff, but the shoot went so smoothly that we didn't need to get any more shots. We got a singing ghost lady, spooky ball kid. We got a machete wielding maniac machete wielding maniac instead of machete wielding maniac. We did that take like maybe four times and two of the four times he said machete instead of machete and we had a good take where he said machete. 
Uh, but Sam Slade opted to leave in Wachetti, and I think we all loved it. While the guys were editing, I was running around getting signatures from people because uh, we had to have them sign a form that they were involved with the 48-hour film project. Despite the shoot going great the day before, uh, we did not think once about getting those signatures. And, like, we both had the same idea what we wanted for the music, and we were like, he was, he was showing me some songs, like, we could do this song, this song, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, what about this, the, the, the Wild Pogo song, which is something we've used, like, a, a once or twice before, and I was like, that song's great. We should use that. And he's like, I already put it in. <laughs> it really tells the audience when to laugh. You know, it really helps out. Where am I going? Well, the one thing I was concerned about was how we're doing on time because with a lot of our shorts, especially last year, we have a lot of bits, we have a lot of humor, we like to put a lot of it in there, uh, only for us to cut most of it out. Kevin was all worried it was gonna be too long, and I was like, nah. I was, I, I, I was so happy that I was wrong. We watch a mostly finished version on his laptop and we all thought, it was funny, which is another change from last year because we watched the finished version and none of us thought it was funny and we wanted to just drive off a cliff. We drove up early. Um, the, only, the only thing that was kind of scary was that we were exporting from a laptop and the laptop uh, power outlet that we had bought last year to do the same thing was not working. Anytime we went over a bump, it would just dip out and Sam Slade's laptop was at like 30% and we're in the middle of rendering. So every two minutes or so, I would be like, fuck, we lost power. Sam Slade's car slash the charger was trying to sabotage us and was not gonna let that happen. I was not gonna let that happen. I refused to let it happen. So I prevented it by filling out paperwork. There's Kevin, the man who can write anything. I filled out um, pretty much all of the paperwork, um, despite Alec being team leader. Even though we were still outside transferring files, there was never a point where I was worried. Like, I knew that we were exporting something I was proud of. We were just sitting there, just waiting for it, and we were just watching all the teams come in and all the teams who were, like, super confident and, like, going in, and there were other teams who did not look so confident. Just watching, like, the different, like, reactions on people's faces, they were turning it in. Some people were deadpan. One guy gave us free burritos and tried to poison his competition. I knew that we'd make it in time, so I was just looking around like, ah, these fears for the failures. My favorite part was just playing Kip Wallace. He's a great character, and I was really, I was really sad to be done shooting because like I just wanted to keep playing that character because he's just, he's just a lot of fun. My favorite moment definitely is the next morning. Uh, I texted the guys. I'm like, hey, how's it going? How's it coming along? And I said, how are we doing on time? Only to find out it all fit perfectly. And that was the best feeling in the world, knowing that all the jokes that you wrote and came up with are now going to be all in the short. Uh, it was a really good moment once it was assembled the first time and I watched it through and I was like, once this is all done, it's gonna be great. Like, this is so good. Having it, like, like the it, it, I this year we actually got to experience the magic of the, like what the, what the 48 hour festival says is great about it. I think we actually got to experience. I've re-fallen in love with, with like just doing the 48 hour thing. Least favorite bit? I don't know. Um, it's kind of hot. Filming in the house, I suppose. A little uncomfortable at times. So I guess cleaning. Cleaning was annoying. I'm an actor, I shouldn't have to clean. I didn't really clean anything though. Ezra, I think, cleaned everything. Well, making Ezra clean everything was my least favorite part. Uh, my least favorite moments? Spider attack, definitely. When that spider tried to kill me. I'd say that was the, the worst part. Oh fuck, fuck a spider web. Jack me, Vince, <laughs> Vince. You gotta get me, dude, it's all over my face. Oh shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're all right. Where? Where the fuck is it? But a very big spider on me. I don't really have any leaks. I, like really like nothing in my, like I can't even remember anything going wrong. During the short, everyone was laughing the entire time, which was awesome to see because we knew that we thought it was funny, but that is never a mark that anyone else will think it's funny. Um, and so seeing the entire theater just, you know, also think that Kip Wallace was, was funny was just, it was very enabling. 
you know, whenever our our shorts or any of our film screen, like I black out, and so I don't, I'm not aware of anything that happens. But um, I'm told that we had a really good audience reaction. So we were lucky enough to make it into the audience screening, and that time. Uh, things were a little different because there's there were 15 screenings and each screening had two audience winners. So this you're thinking, okay, this is the best two shorts from each screening group, and you know most of them we had not seen. And so I was thinking, all right, you know we we think we're great. We thought that we were good compared to the ones that we saw, but you know there's always the chance that something's just going to come out of left field and kick our asses. I did not get to go to the uh, the first screening, but I did hear that we did really well. Uh, I did get to go to the audience awards, and um, and we were in the top two of that one, which was great, and uh, eventually top one. Watching people watch it, like the reactions, like I did not think people were gonna love it as much as they did. Like it, every time got the biggest laugh, you know? And that was surprising. We definitely have some competition ahead of us, so I'm, I'm excited to see how the uh, the best of goes because you know there's some really good short films that are nominated, um, and I'm also scared because there there's a few that I'm like, man, they're way funnier than us. Last year we were nominated for six awards, and there were way fewer competitors. There's there's infinitely more teams, and the sh and just the, the the value and the content of all the shorts are way better. So for the awards, um. I think we have a shot at everything. We're definitely winning at least one category. And it'll be best use of line. Best use of prop or uh, line. Line and prop. Honestly, what we're gonna get nominated for uh, Probably best writing. Yeah, we can win best writing. Best actor because I've, you know, just based off people's reactions, a lot of people really love Brian's performance, and he did do great. The 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 thing that he has going against him is that it's just a goofy character. <laughs> I'm not gonna say we're going to get audience, but I think that we have a good chance at it. <laughs> there were people who were up there and they're like, oh, my entire crew abandoned me. Oh yeah, like, the, they definitely have horror stories. They, like, they're probably gonna have better documentaries than us. Last year, I think, was a hugely, um, educational experience for all of us kind of a learning curve but um this time i think it's it, it i think this time was was an exercise also but it was an exercise in uh beating everyone and being the best <laughs> <laughs> film the femme and i was like that's not a real genre also we don't know any women it's basically just another requirement instead of it being like a genre it's like here's another prop not that women are props. <laughs> like we didn't make it for fun, for the craft, or for like practice. I've we never had fun in my life. life. Yeah, no, I've never, that's not a big, like I went to Chuck E. Cheese and you know what I did the whole time? I, I applied for a job. <laughs> for various events such as bar mitzvahs and weddings, birthday parties and such, even though I don't know why you would have a birthday party anywhere but your own house. <laughs> That doesn't really make much sense to me. <laughs> An astute businessman from Boston? <laughs> Chicago? Boston? Chicago? Boston? He's from somewhere, I'm sure. Yeah, Allie was in the last one. She would have been someone that we would have contacted to bring back, and we did contact her, and I... I mean, she said no for whatever reason. She, she said she was busy. She said... She was busy. I know she was busy. She's a busy person, like, especially on the weekends when she doesn't have school. I subscribe to the idea that healthy competition is good. So, so... Unhealthy competition. <laughs> <laughs> We should test that out. Put salsa, like put dip in with the chips and then make a smoothie out of it. That would be that, gross. That, that, that would be gross. That can't no. be a good idea. And then you turn it into a shake. Should be delicious, right? 
No. I hope this documentary doesn't suck because there's no like real tension or anything wrong that happened, you know? Like I hope it's not 50 minutes of us just saying how great we are. That wouldn't be entertaining. Watching you guys work together and being able to be a part of it and even having you guys listen to what I was saying and putting it into use, um, it just shows the growth of all of us as filmmakers and how we're able to just to adapt each, to each other's styles. A big inspiration for me just to continue with my passion with this and to work with you guys again. So, yeah. He melted his way into my heart. <laughs> Um, like, ask me how I feel about working on Uncle Mickey Productions. Alright, Brian, how do you feel about working on Uncle Mickey Productions? Why would you, you ask me that? 